Welcome back to the main stage, everyone. And I'll say a big thanks to my colleague, Liz, for uh, taking care of the last session. Um, so we are here joined by the team at British Gas. Um, so big welcome to you all. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, I remind you, get all your questions into the Q&A. Um, they really want a Q&A session at the end, so get, make sure all your questions come in. Uh, but for now, I'll hand you over to the team. So Sam, over to you. Good afternoon all, uh, thanks for joining. Hi, I'm Sam Curtis. I work for uh, British Gas in the climate change team. Uh, so looking at how we manage our emissions going forward for kind of those uh, of us as a company and all for, also for our customers. Um, hopefully you're roughly familiar with British Gas. You know, we might your parents might get um, their energy from us or you might get your kind of boiler service and there are a range of other um, products and services that we deliver for you. Uh, what I'm gonna take you through today is called our People and Planet Plan, which is for us as a business, is our sustainability strategy in terms of how we see ourselves going forward over the next few decades um, as a responsible business to deliver against our environmental and social objectives. And it'll give you a bit of a flavor, uh, hopefully for us as a company and uh, the kind of work that you'll get involved in um, if you join us. Um, other slides? So just... They're not. <laughs> right. Here we go, cracking. Okay, so this is um, this is it at a very high level. Our people and planet plan is, is what we, we, we call it. And it's five goals kind of overarching um, for us to de deliver what we call a, a more inclusive and sustainable future for everyone. So the main area I talk on is planet, and then I'll introduce you to my uh, colleague, Claire. Um, the planet is the, their objective is to support all of our customers to live ever more sustainably in what they do. So that restricts itself mainly to energy, but that's the kind of the main part, as you can imagine, as an energy company, climate change and net zero is absolutely critical. It's it's not just a risk, it's an opportunity, and it's it's integral to all of the decisions we make as a company strategically and operationally for our customers. Uh, there are two targets um, that we, we kind of frame this around. One is getting ourselves to, a, a, to net zero as a business so that our, our GHG emissions flat out to zero. Um, and uh, that's gone on historically with our company for the last 10 years or so. We've wiped out over 80 percent of our emissions already and we've kind of pivoted away so that now we don't really generate much power for ourselves. Um, and a lot of our emissions uh, are, are operational. So one of the key proof points in the, the areas that you would be involved in and you would see on a day-to-day -day basis if you joined British Gas would be our EV fleet. So we have the third largest electric, um, the third largest fleet, sorry, in the UK um, with all of our engineers going around to homes across the country, servicing, helping people get back online, repairing um, and installing the technology to help people uh, live their lives with energy. Um, we are going to have that fully electrified by 2025. Um, we placed the largest order in Europe uh, for electric vehicles when we did that. And that's a kind of a key step in uh, our operational emissions and getting to net zero. Um, and then hopefully what might be more interested, um, interesting for you all in terms of what you'll actually be doing for the business if you, if you joined would be what we're doing for our customers. So all of our jobs, we have a wide range of careers in, in, in British Gas but all of them fundamentally will deliver net zero and decarbonisation for our customers going forward. So when you think of British Gas, um, certainly if you ask your parents about British Gas, they'll all know the trusted British Gas engineer that you let into your home to service what most people uh, you have as, in terms of a gas boiler. Um, the careers are wider than that. Now that is still certainly a very good uh, career in, the, in British Gas and that delivers um, decarbonisation for our customers by installing high efficiency uh, gas boilers so that you use less gas to heat your home, reduce your emissions. And then as time goes forward, there'll be cross scaling. And when either gas transitions to hydrogen or greener fuel, that will uh, decarbonise emissions. Or what you may have seen in the news and from yesterday, the government released their um, heat and building strategy, the future heating of the UK homes will, for many millions of homes, be heat pumps and alternative low carbon uh, technologies. Now, these are different but similar. 
Um, and so that they, they work a bit like a reverse fridge is how you think of them. So they take any energy they can find in the air outside and then pump it round into the same radiator system you have today. And so if you joined uh, as an apprentice, you, you can see yourself being skilled up through various uh, various uh, trainings. And then eventually you might just be installing um, heat pumps rather than gas in, in 10, 15 years. That that would be a, a, a clear trajectory in development um, for lots of people. And the alternative if you, the, 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 that's uh, slightly different to gas engineering would be smart meter installs that um, are absolutely vital to uh, decarbonizing the electricity grid as a whole and understanding what's going on and the installation of EV charge points. And people jump between um, these careers and cross skill uh, as, as, as they desire and as the need within the business uh, evolves. Um, Happy to take any questions after this on the, the, the wider careers in, in British gas, but those are the kind of key ones that I think you, you might have in mind if you join for an apprenticeship. Um, and so to deliver on these skills, kind of, we need uh, the staff to do so. And uh, Claire, am I worried to hand over to you to take on the, the people side? Thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, so as Sam said, really, just as important as our planet goals are making sure that we have the right people and the right environment to to be able to make those happen. Um, so I'm our recruitment marketing manager here. So I'm looking after getting our jobs out to the right people um, and getting the best possible people um, we can on board. So really excited to, to be talking to you all today. And hopefully this, this is something that's going to interest you in the future. Um, so one of the first goals in our people space is that by 2030 we want to create an engaged and inclusive team that reflects the full diversity of the communities we serve. So that's a bit of a mouthful. Um, so what does that actually mean? If for me it means that as someone who works for us or is one of our customers you should be able to look at any level or any area of our organisation and find someone like you. Whoever you are, however you see yourself, you should be able to see someone else like you in our organization. We want everyone who works for us to feel like you can bring your whole self to work and that you are really valued for that. Um, and this isn't something that's just being driven from the top down. This isn't just a, a statistic and, and something that our leader's driving. It's actually something that if you were to come and work with us, you'd really be able to feel a part of um, and get involved in. So, for example, we have a, a number of employee networks. So we have Spectrum, our LGBTQ plus network, Centrica Women's Network, Voice, our ethnicity network, Carers Network, Diversibility Network, lots of others. Um, and these networks are groups of colleagues that are really responsible for helping to drive that change um, and we know we know we're not there yet um, and it's going to take some time um, Carla if you could just skip to the next slide if that's all right um, you'll you'll start to be able to see some things on on screen that that show just just some of the the things we're doing and, and the changes we're starting to make in this space but Essentially, we know that if we don't have a diverse um, and an inclusive team working for us, it's not until we have that, that we're really going to be able to, to drive the change our customers want to see and really make sure that our customers feel like they're fully represented by us. So this is, is a really big space that, that we're, um, we're making a change in at the moment and that I think you'd really be able to feel a part of if you were to join us. Um, and one really key part of this, which is, is particularly relevant to you, is that by 2030, we want to recruit 3,500 apprentices, um, as well as providing sort of career development opportunities for underrepresented groups. Um, and a thousand of those apprentices uh, we're looking to commit to by 2022. Um, and one of the goals we have in this space is that 50 percent of those apprentices will be female um, so this is this is a big change for us you probably you think of a, a stereotypical British gas engineer I'm, I'm sure you've got a picture in mind and it's, it's probably not um, female but it's 
that's something we're we're really committed um, to changing, and a, a huge amount of work is um, is going on in that space at the moment. Um, and the third area um, in a sort of the the people space is is around volunteering. So one of the things when, when you work for Centrica, you get two paid volunteering days a year, which are yours to take and um, and use. Um, however however is, is sort of most inspiring to you um and we have sort of some big partnerships so we've had partnerships with carers uk partnerships with the trussell trust and, and next year we'll be looking to sort of progress with, with our next charity partnership and again you can start to see some of the things on, on screen there um during the pandemic four million meals were were delivered um in partnership with the trussell trust um, huge donations we've been able to make to Carers UK and um, we've got targets that our colleagues will be giving 100,000 days of volunteering by 2030 and, and 10,000 of those days by 2022. So the the work that, that we're sort of championing with our customers, we really want colleagues to feel that they can see and be part of that in their local community. So um, that that volunteering space is is a really important one to us as well, and one that that we hope you will be able to be a part of. Um, so that is a, a whistle stop tour through our, our people and planet plan. And again, as Sam said, we, we can come back to it at the end. But I'm now going to hand over to Lewis, um, who can tell you a little bit about his journey um, from from apprentice to to where he is now. Thank you, uh, thank you, Claire, and, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, excited to have a chance to, to come and speak with you all today. Uh, and actually, I wish I had this sort of event available to me so, ten years ago before I started my apprenticeship because I didn't go directly into an apprenticeship. Um, I left school, um, decent GCSE results, but didn't really know what it was I wanted to, to go and do. Actually, um, I've got myself a little part-time job alongside joining sixth form. Um, but what I quickly found there was interacting with members of the public, interacting with adults effectively in the workplace was far more engaging for myself than it was to then go back and continue my studies, um, which was when I was online looking and, and found the apprenticeship being advertised at British Gas. And unfortunately, um, my application was successful. And 10 years ago in June, I first walked through the doors in uh, Leicester Academy. Um, to start my apprenticeship as a, as a gas service and repair engineer. Um, and for me, there's a few bits I want to talk about today. Is, is a little bit about the apprenticeship in general and why anybody on this call should consider an apprenticeship, in my opinion. And then also share a little bit around what I've been up to in the past 10 years, um, what opportunities I've had presented to myself and also what opportunities are, are definitely there for, for anybody joining the business. Um, one thing I'm key for though is please do use the Q&A as well and um, get plenty of questions on there because we'd love to have a little bit of time to, to go through those at the end of the session. Um, so for me, I think first of all, from an apprenticeship perspective is if you asked me to come and sit here 10 years ago, there would have been absolutely no chance. Um, I, I first walked through the doors. My first day was walking into a group with everybody else who was new and I did not say a word. Um, now you struggle to, to shut me up. And that is also part of, as an apprenticeship, yes, you will gain skills, yes, you will gain qualifications, um, but actually you will develop yourself as a, as a person. Um, you'll find yourself as a person as well. Diversity, inclusion is, is really key. Um, and the more we can create that atmosphere um, will really help you develop um, those key life skills religion move through. Um, so in terms of my apprenticeship, I was based at the Leicester Academy, as I mentioned. So we have got four academies currently open, um, one in Hamilton, one in Leicester, one in Faction, and one in Dartford. And within there, we, we complete our technical training um, internally with our apprentices coming through. And then you'll also spend time in the field. So for myself, I was working around the Southwest Midlands area where I'd split the time between spending times in an academy and then spending times out in the field with a mentor, picking up the key skills and taking what I'd learned in a classroom environment and putting them into practice and the field. Moving on from there, um, I then moved into a role which was known as a safety assurance engineer. And I spent some time assessing uh, engineers and the field, helping develop them and their skill sets. So it was quite clear early on from a career perspective, Centrica and British Gas really backed people wanting to progress. It wasn't a 
you have to wait your turn and, and spend so many years doing this. When you are ready to develop and, and progress within your career, the opportunities are, are absolutely there. I then moved into um, in my first leadership role. Um, so I took on a HSC leadership role um, where I spend a lot of time um, working with a wider leadership team within the business, our safety reps within the business, and our engineers within the business to really drive safety, uh, making sure A, we're compliant, but most importantly, people are getting well, um, about getting home safe and well at the end of their days. I've moved into different regional roles within that, but probably most exciting and most relevant to today, actually. Um, pretty much 10 years on from first walking through the academy doors, I moved back into the academy to, to lead the team within the Leicester Academy, um, which was a fantastic opportunity for me, very exciting. And sort of two weeks after starting that role, we sort of had the green light to say, yep, it's time to bring apprentices back into the business, um, which was just a fantastic opportunity. So I've, I've had the pleasure for the majority of this year um, to, to be supporting my team in, in leading and developing apprentices who've been joining the business since, since March this year. Um, and it has been fantastic to be around, not only from the buzz and excitement they have coming into the business and, and what they pass on, to, to the team and, and everybody else around them, but to see the future, uh, and, and Sam touched on it earlier as well, to see the future technologies emerging, the opportunities um, they will have to, to get involved with is, is really key. And you can really start to see that career path. And in, in fact, I've moved into a, a new role now where I'm, I'm covering some of our operational teams in the Southwest. And just last week, I was arranging training for engineers to, to upskill and start to work on some of the air source heat pumps. So that journey of development into the green technology space is, is really key. Um, and with the smart apprenticeship as well, which is currently available, it gives you so many different potential career paths and is a really, really good starting point within the business. And the, the continuous improvement and the, the development opportunities there are, are really key. Um, but I am keen to, to pass over to Carlo and also um, if we have any questions, come and spend a little bit of time answering those. Thank you, Lewis. Um, and, and thanks, everybody. So I think initially, just to kind of introduce myself, I'm Carla. Um, I sit within the group HR function. So I work with the same team um, as Claire. Um, I'm a, a talent acquisition specialist. So, so in short, guys, what that means is I support the recruitment process as well as any career development plans and tools that potentially enable some of our colleagues to do their job, um, but equally work within the colleague experience team. So part of that is a very, very broad role. Um, but equally, what I wanted to do today, just to close um, so that we have time for questions, is just talk to you about what the process looks like. Should it be something that, you know, one of my three colleagues have touched upon and you think, OK, so what do I need to do or what is the criteria to be considered? Um, in short, it's four GCSEs, grade C and above or five equivalent Scottish ones. Um, you need a driving license with no more than six points on. Um, and the, the GCSEs, what we, we ideally would look for is maths, English and science and then actually a practical one i think what you know lewis claire and, and sam have touched upon is the practical one we it could be anything from food tech to sports to whatever that might be but actually the criteria to be considered for our, our opportunities um within the smart space it is is mainly that but equally as said work within the group hr function um and sam alluded to earlier there is a lot more roles and a lot more career opportunities than just engineering but equally you know that doesn't sit that we don't have apprenticeships in other spaces so i suppose my call out is um and again we've got the chat we've got the networking sessions to go with is actually reach out to us because um we've got some fantastic ambitions we've got some fantastic colleagues and actually you know our organisation allows us all to bring our whole selves to work. Um, and Claire alluded to it. There is always somebody like ourselves or like you that you will see as you look up or down the chain. And we've all got a common goal. So I think without further ado, um, if we're able to open up for questions, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much, all of you. Um, I thought that was a really nice balance of what's happening within the business and some personal stories and a bit of background. So really appreciate it. Um, yes, some questions have come through. So um, thank you very much for all of those and keep them coming on. We've got about eight minutes or so. Um, so the first one. Um, so I think you might have just touched on this a little bit, Carla, but what sort of skill set and educational background do your apprentices need? 
So in terms of skill set, obviously it's an entry level role. Um, you've got to be 16 and above, although I'm not sure you can obtain a license at 16 now, being completely honest. I think it's 17, isn't it? I'm a little bit old in the tooth. But um, four GCSEs, um, grade C and above, um, or if you're in Scotland, equivalent of five NATs. Um, and again, excuse my naivety, guys. There you go. I'll, I'll keep it as real as I can. Um, but but in, in theory, that's mass English and science, ideally. But again, it's not restricted. Um, and, and that really, with your driving license, would be your entry level requirement. Yeah, really. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully that that means that whatever kind of background or skill set or what people like, there is an opportunity there for them. So, yeah, thank you very much. Um, and then again, sort of a similar related question, but maybe to thinking about how people can show what they've done and bring it to the application process. So this is a question from Annalise. So thank you very much, Annalise. Um, what kind of activities would you recommend us doing before we apply? Oh, well, I think we probably all have a different perspective on that. I mean, personally, talking about volunteering or activity days that I've been involved in recently. Um, so I've been into a school and done some interview tips. Um, I've taught people, given that we sit within the talent acquisition, how to write a CV or so anything to do with with kind of, I suppose, a personal interest, but equally something that shows that you're passionate about something. Again, it's not it's not necessarily, you know, our focus is purely our customers, but equally it's about sustainability and wanting to be a net, a net zero organisation, help the UK to get there. So I suppose anything that is, is within the community, um, anything around that, whether it be, you know, putting together food parcels for a food bank you know fantastic whether it be you know helping out in a school or or just generally helping out the next door neighbor wash the car actually there is no right or wrong activity i think it's about showing the willingness and actually being an open individual and actually there probably is a place for you great great answer thank you um and then annalise has also uh, got a secondary question as part of that so um Good work, Annalise, sneaking two and one. Um, so maybe, um, maybe this is a question for, for you, Lewis. Um, Annalise asks uh, what the work-life balance is like at British Gas. Uh, personally, I think it's it's great. Um, and, and I think what is, for, for me, what is brilliant, particularly with if we look at the um, sort of current uh, apprentice roles being advertised at the moment within that smart mirroring space is, as, as Carla touched on earlier, the requirement for a driving license because you were given um, a van on day one um, or certainly during that first week. And I think the, the, the brilliant thing for me is you, you, you start your day from your house um, and more often you'll be working around your, your local area with, with the occasional travel um, in terms of once you're up and running within that role and, and then you're back home at the end of the day. So you, your shifts are planned out. We get really good um, and you'll leave entitlement as well as a company, plus many, many more benefits, which I'm sure in the networking sessions, um, Carla will go through in, in far more detail. But f for me, it's, it's been, I've been here 10 years now. Um, I've never really thought about leaving. Um, and, the, you know, the, the balance for me has been, been spot. Great. A ringing endorsement. Um, so a question from um, Imad. So uh, we've, we've talked a lot about, I guess, the, the engineer kind of gas engineer um, apprenticeships. Uh, they ask, um, what opportunities does British Gas have for individuals that might be looking outside that, for example, uh, marketing? So I, don't um, know. I can jump in. Um, I, I kind of touch upon talent acquisition generally. Um, so in terms of that, I'd say, you know, we, we advertise all, all roles on our website, um, but equally, you know, I'm happy to pick up offline or in the chat um, in, in terms of an apprenticeship within marketing. Um, it's not something that we currently offer. But if I think about um, where I, I mean, again, like Lewis, I've been here over 10 years now. So that hopefully cements that it's a great place to work. But if I think about where we were a year ago, we didn't offer DTS apprenticeships. Uh, we now do. And we understand that as an organisation to have a reflective workforce of our communities, we need to offer them up them opportunities across the board. So, you know, DTS apprenticeships are now um, up and running. I think we've got good pipelines in place, but we're constantly exploring different different routes to market in terms of how we look to attract and make sure that we're bringing in the reflection of our customer base. So. I think if it's entry level, um, you know, there's probably, you know, we have an early careers team that would specialise in that. But equally, I actually sit within the professional hire team as well. So it, again, depends on the background that they have and actually what the business is requiring at that time, um, if, if I'm completely honest with you. So happy to pick up offline. And I think, sorry, just on that marketing one, I think don't feel restricted about how 
how you enter the company. So, so one of the colleagues who I work with in marketing at the moment, she joined us as a customer service advisor, moved to a team leader, and then moved across from one of our customer contact centers to work in, in our head office in marketing. So I think the size and, and scale of our organization, don't restrict yourself um, yeah. when you're joining. If there's there's an area that joins interest, you go for it, but that's not necessarily where, where you're gonna be pigeonholed for the rest of your career. If, if you've got aspirations to, to move around um, and on that sort of work-life balance question as well for our for our office-based roles we now have an approach called flexible first um, and that basically means that it, it's for you to choose so you manage your work life between home and the office as works for you so you've got the opportunity to go into the office to connect and collaborate with colleagues but also the opportunity to work at home to fit around sort of your, your other kind of life commitments and just to get your head down and, and crack on with, with work on, on the days that you need to do that. So um, it's not necessarily so relevant to our engineering roles when you're out in customers' homes, but for the office-based roles, that's that's another big uh, big move that, that we've made recently to, to help with work-life balance. Great, thank you. Yeah, and I think you, you also touched on um, uh, a question there as well from, from Annalise. So thanks again, Annalise. Um, she she talks about uh, room and space for progression. So I guess um, so. Lewis, you mentioned some of yours, and Sam um, uh, again from your, from your experiences. How how have you seen progression within? Yeah, there's there's, there's definitely progression there, and and the the team have, have touched on it. it. It doesn't have to be directly through that engineering route. There's Century is a, a huge huge um, organization, which which British Gas is 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 a big part of that. Um, and there's many routes. And for example, I'm, I'm just finishing off currently um, a level six qualification completely unrelated to engineering. It's, it's based within sort of HSE space and that's through um, development opportunities with, within the company still 10 years on. So plenty of space for that. Yeah. I, and to mirror that in the office uh, environment, I've changed businesses three times within the kind of parent group and um, jumped up and down and slightly sideways with careers. The, the, the new CEO that came in a few years ago were, really made a big um, show of highlighting that he'd rather bring people um, up internally rather than looking externally. So, you know, you help, you help keep the best people and de offers development opportunity to new joiners. And can I, can I just finish off by saying um, that our apprenticeships are not just open for 16 year olds, they're open for career changes. And I kind of wanted to put that out there because, you know, the audience, I'm not sure what that is, but, it could be somebody that's, that's, you know, COVID's been heavy for us all. Um, it could be just somebody wants to retrain and actually just do something a little bit different that they're, they're passionate about. So it's open for all, is what I'd say. There's no limits um, as to who we would consider as, as a colleague. Yeah, really good point, actually. I, I think some, it's probably the first time that's really been mentioned across the ones that I've yeah. listened to. So, um, but also yeah. a really good reminder. Yeah, we have we have, uh, we have parents and, and carers and all sorts joining these. So um, we, we actually really have, just very quickly, so we actually have um, in one of our academies, we had a mother and son join the apprenticeship together, um, which oh, is just rare yeah. and brilliant. Oh, really good. Um, yeah, obvious question, who, is, who progressed the best, I guess? But. <laughs> um, I'm not watching. I'm not answering that one. <laughs> um, great. Well, let's let's call that a day there. But thank you so much to all of you. As I said, I thought that was a great mix and really good insight into Centricus um, British Gas. So thank you very much. Um, you mentioned that you might be in the booth, so I'll direct you over there for any questions I didn't get to ask. So but thank you all. Really appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Thanks, thanks, thanks all. Thanks all. Good luck, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.